helpful as well. But please just go and follow along. If you guys have any questions or any confusion, just stop me, ask a question. I'll be more than happy to um, go back over it or you know, stop where I'm at. So again, just kind of working it in a step process. The first thing you're going to want to do, Josh, is group the x's and the y's. So I group the x's. And then I put the constant on the other side. All right. So now the next thing I need to do is complete the square. I need to create two, two perfect square trinomials that I can rewrite as binomial squared. So I need to complete the square. Before I can go ahead and do that, I need to make sure I factor out my constants in front to make sure my x squareds are equal, or my coefficient of x squared equals 1. So the first term, I'll factor out a 4. And then here, I'll factor out a negative 9. Does everybody follow me right there? Okay. Now, this is much better than your homework quiz. Now, I just need to, come to create my perfect square trinomials. I need to take b divided by 2 and square it. So I take negative 4 divided by 2 and square it, which equals negative 4 divided by 2, which is negative 2, which equals 4. And then over here, I take 2 divided by 2 and square it. So and that equals 1. So now, remember, what do we do with those numbers? We plug them into both of our parentheses to make our constant for our perfect square trinomial, as well as add them to the other side. But as I've mentioned before, the most common mistake that students make is that they forget to not only add them to the other side, that's a squared, but they forget to add them correctly to the other side. So since I took this 4, I added it inside the parentheses. That means I need to add 4 over here. But notice, this 4 on the left side is being multiplied by 4. So the 4 on the right side that I add also has to be multiplied by 4. Same thing with the 1. I'm adding 1 on the left side. I need to add a 1 on the right side. But that 1 is being multiplied by negative 9. So this one needs to be multiplied by negative 9 as well. All right. So now what I'll be able to do is now I can rewrite my binomial squares as perfect square trinomials. If you guys remember, it's just b divided by 2, x plus or minus b divided by 2. Um, but hopefully you guys recognize these two binom perfect square trinomials as x minus 2 squared minus 9 times y plus 1 squared equals 4 times 4 is 16. Um, so if you guys add all that up, you'll get 36. Now, remember, our equation for a hyperbola or an ellipse is it's equal to 1. Now, this is going to be a hyperbola because I noticed I'm subtracting between my two terms. But either way, I'll divide everything by 36. So when dividing by everything by 36, this reduces to 1 ninth. This reduces down to 1 fourth. That goes down to as 1. OK? So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, now what I have is x minus 2 squared over 3 minus y plus 1 squared over 4 equals 1. Does everybody see that? Anybody have any questions on that? We're not done yet, because what did the question actually ask? <coughs> so asking us for the type of graph, the orientation, and the center. Well, the center, actually what I'm going to do is we're going to find all the points, because I know in your test that's what you guys have to do. So the center is 2 comma negative 1. Now this is also, since I see the subtraction, I know it's a hyperbola. But my main question is, is does this, is this hyperbola have a major axis, or I'm sorry, a transverse axis that is horizontal or vertical? Aaron. OK, that's why we're looking over here. So I'll go over to Charlie. Charlie, do you know, is this a horizontal or a vertical transverse axis? Incorrect. It is a horizontal. The reason why I you did it was not too bad. The reason why it's a horizontal is because remember it's always a squared minus b squared for hyperbolas, right? Always. So since my x is over my a, it's horizontal transverse axis. All right, and that's very important because if it's a horizontal transverse axis, ladies and gentlemen. That means my graph, let's pretend it looks like this. If it's horizontal, then we know that the vertices 
and the foci and the center all lie horizontally. Therefore, if I'm asking you to find the foci and the vertices, are you going to be adding? You're going to be adding left or right, right? Not up or down. So what am I going to add to on my center? The x coordinates or the y coordinates, Lucas? X coordinates, because that's going to go left or right. So since we already know what a and b are, we can say that a squared equals 3. So therefore, a equals the square root of 3. b squared equals 4. So therefore, b equals 2. And then to find c, remember the formula is c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So c squared equals what, 7? Square root, square root. c equals the square root of 7, which is 2.645751, 1, 3. But we'll just leave it as that. All right. So just in case you need to do this for your test, which you guys do need to know, let's go ahead and determine what the center, the vertices, and the foci are going to be. We know the center is 2, comma, negative 1. The vertices are at the center, but they're just the a distance away. But remember, since we're going left to right, I'm going to add and subtract them to my center or my x coordinate. So it's going to be 2 plus or minus 3 comma negative 1. Please simplify this if you can. So 2 plus 3 is going to be 5 negative 1 or negative 1 negative 1. Then the foci. The foci have the distance of c. Since we figured out the value of c, which is the square root of 7, we're going to say 2 plus or minus the square root of 7 minus 1. You don't need to break that one apart. I'll accept it like that since it cannot be really simplified. But do you guys notice how? The y coordinates all the same for the center, the vertices, and the foci because they all lie on that horizontal axis. That's what's most important about that for you guys to understand that. That's all the question I was asking. I went a little above and beyond for you because um, I know your test will be something similar to what I just did. Yes? If you were going to graph it, then yes, you'd have to find the co-vertices. You will be graphing them. 6C, you had to graph. 